Walking in divine healing. I am so excited to talk about this topic. It's something I'm really passionate about. Our God is so much fun. He's so joyful and he loves you so much. And if you've watched my video called Healing from the Religious Spirit and Legalism, this is going to dovetail and go really well with that video. So if you're trying to just work up your faith for healing, um, this one and that other video would be really good to watch. So first, before I get started talking about healing, I just want to brag on how sweet Jesus is. So first of all, I was at a dinner tonight and when they brought out the dessert, they had these lovely flowers on there. And I was like, why let a good flower go to waste? So I had the bobby pin in my purse and I put the flower in my hair because why should a good flower just be thrown away? So why don't you try asking Jesus for a little Easter egg tomorrow, maybe a flower or just something fun, a little, little something to surprise you with. And then on the way home, I was just like, I really want a decaf coffee. But it was pretty late and most of the coffee shops were closed. So I stopped at my friendly neighborhood racetrack. And if you don't have racetrack gas stations near you, I'm so sorry because they're great. That and Quick Trip. But I go in there and I'm like, I'm getting my um, decaf coffee while I'm gassing up. And the cashier goes, you're fine. Don't worry about it. She's like, if that's it, she's like, you're good to go. And I kind of had to like, she kind of had to repeat herself. So I just got a free um, decaf coffee from racetrack. So, so thanks guys. So that was another sweet little Easter egg from Jesus because I went way over my coffee budget last month. Um, like a lot of Christians tend to do, we probably keep coffee shops in business. <laughs> so that said, um, Jesus is nice. Jesus is kind and he will put these little blessings in your day, like free coffee and a free flower, um, just look for them. But today's topic, walking in divine healing. So this morning at church was awesome. Um, we had a lot of people believing in faith for healing. Um, this is a continuation. The Lord has been really focusing on healing a lot in our church. So um, last Monday, um, a lot of people received healing during our weekly prayer time. And then this Sunday, today was sort of um, a breakthrough Sunday was the theme. So whatever you've been believing God for and, you know, have yet to see breakthrough in, we just wanted to agree with one another. And our pastor preached on Mark 5, and I'm going to focus on this in the Passion Translation because when I opened it in my Bible app in the Passion Translation. It was just really powerful and it, it, it gave some new insight. So a few years ago when I was trying to heal from my mysterious chronic health issues, um, this story of the bleeding woman was one that really inspired me, that really grabbed me when when I was trying to believe, when I was still wrestling with theology that said, well, maybe God wants me to be sick for his glory or for his will. And, and that's sort of how I had been taught. And all evidence would seem to show, like from a physical standpoint, that maybe God did want me to be sick because I'd been praying. I had had people praying. I'd done everything that I could for, you know, a year and a half, two years. And um, I was still sick. So... This is a big deal for me to stand on this, but this was one of the verses that I carried around with me. And so I'm going to go through it just line by line, and then we're just going to hopefully just stir up your faith for healing today and for um, walking in divine health in all seasons of life. So Jesus is on his way to heal someone else. And starting in um, Mark chapter 5, verse 24, it says that a huge crowd followed, pressing in on him from all sides. Now, in the crowd that day was a woman who had suffered horribly from continual bleeding for 12 years. She had endured a great deal under the care of various doctors, yet in spite of spending all she had on their treatments, she was getting worse instead of better. When she had heard about Jesus' healing power, she pushed through the crowd 
and came up from behind him and touched his prayer shawl. For she kept saying to herself, if I could touch even his clothes, I know I will be healed. As soon as her hand touched him, her bleeding immediately stopped. She knew it, for she could feel her body instantly being healed of her disease. All right, so that's verse 29. I'm going to pause right there for a moment and go through what we've just talked about. So, guys, 12 years. And some of you, you may have had a chronic health condition you've suffered from for 12 years. Um, things like fibromyalgia, lupus, horrible things that... Um, you know, it, they're chronic and they're hard to treat and sometimes they're unexplainable. Uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, Lyme disease, these things are, are awful and they're not God's will for your life. They're not, um, they're not what God wants for you. They're not his best. Again, he'll use everything. Absolutely. And I know you probably have so many testimonies of how God's brought you through and taught you through this, but his ultimate plan is not for you to just be sick all the time, your whole life. Like that is not his, his will. He is a healing God. Um, that's who he is. Jesus never turned anyone away who came to him and he does not want to turn you away, beloved. Um, I'm actually listening to this book right now called The Veil by Blake Healy. It's really powerful. It's about seeing in the spirit. And he talks about how when people pray for healing, he always sees ministering angels with a jar of basically healing liquid ready to pour it out. So like there, in fact, and this, this is a whole other video, but most of the things we pray, we're just coming into agreement with what heaven already wants to do. Like there are angels all around us, ministering spirits who are ready and willing to come to our aid. The minute we open our mouth to speak truth or speak the gospel, speak freedom over someone, speak a word of prophecy or a word of knowledge or pray for healing, they're like, waiting for us to do it. Like we can't occupy heaven enough with our prayers. We have so many uh, ministering spirits around us. Jesus is doing so much good in the world and we just haven't laid claim to most of it. And so in this generation, I believe we're seeing more and more and more and more of an outpouring, right? So his healing power is always available to you. Now, in this woman's case, she had endured a great deal under the care of various doctors. That was me, various doctors, various countries even, various methods of healing, both a uh, you know, naturopath, holistic, and then conventional um, Chinese medicine. I I'd tried everything, and maybe you have too. So she got worse instead of better. Okay, I want to pause here. Relating to my video about the religious spirit, which I struggled with for so long, and it was it was just it was like a, a voice it was always there, just this accusatory voice. How dare you? That sort of thing. I think a lot of us don't know how to receive. You know, the Lord keeps calling me to religious environments, and He keeps calling me to minister to people with a religious background. Um, and I, I gotta be honest, I think that the religious background is often harder to minister to. I feel like a lot of people who have believed in, who have, who don't believe in God at all, they're like, once they believe he actually exists and they're just like, oh, well, of course he's good. Of course he wants to heal me. Like if there, if there is a God, if you can convince me that there is a God, I will also be convinced that he is good and that that definition of good isn't like something weird where you're trying to convince me something is good that isn't good. Um, it, it's a very like simple childlike faith. But a lot of people who've grown up in religion and especially who had curious, inquisitive minds, wanted explanations for everything, well, unfortunately, all too many theological systems are like standing at the ready to try to explain all these things about God that we can't explain. But unfortunately, when we get too deep into those systems, we rely on them. Uh, it precludes relationship with God. It really gets in the way of dynamic relationship with God. Relationship is mysterious. You may be married. You may know your spouse really well. At the same time, they're probably always surprising you with things that you didn't know. And sometimes there are moments where you're like, wow, I didn't know this person as well as I thought. Um, and the same thing with like, with close friendships and things like that. Relationships are messy. 
they are, um, there's complete freedom in relationships, which makes them a little scary. Uh, you can't make the other person do something. They can't make you do anything. And so we try to get around relationship. That's like the natural thing. We have trouble just believing that God is good and waiting on him and receiving from him. So in this case, this woman had been running around for 12 years to all these different doctors, trying to do whatever it took to get healed. But she kept getting worse. And I just want to ask you, have you been trying something in your own strength? And maybe you've just been getting worse. And maybe it's a huge struggle and you're wondering like, Lord, I'm doing everything I can. Why am I not getting better? Maybe resting and waiting and willing to be in his presence, in the pain, in the questions, in the unhealedness, maybe you would get more answers than you've ever gotten before. When I was believing for my physical healing and it was the first time that I'd really done something like that because before I, I was sort of just thought, well, if God wants to heal me, he will and I'll just ask him, but I don't know if he really wants to. Um, when I started declaring it, what started happening was um, my mind, in my mind's eye, I would go into the throne room because one thing I was sure about that even if I wasn't healed here on earth, that my spirit man was whole and, he whole and healed and that in the heavens, in the heavenly places, I am whole and healed. And so I would see myself in the throne room and in that moment, my symptoms would either cease or I would just cease to be aware of them, but my mind would go to that spirit plane and it's like, um, rather than the physical affecting the soul and the, like the spirit was then impacting the soul and the body, which is how it should be. Your soul come into alignment under your spirit and then your body come into alignment under your soul. So that is how we're made to be as we are spirit beings ultimately, and God is spirit. Um, and so, but in those moments, those symptoms would disappear. So even if you can't do anything else, even if it's hard for you to believe for healing in the physical, why not pause, close your eyes and see yourself in the throne room. Just forget about praying for healing. Forget about anything you're going through. Just see yourself in the presence of the Lord face to face with him. See his smile and his laughter and his delight over you. What is he doing? Is he wrapping you in a big hug? Is he just looking deep into your eyes with the fire in his eyes, that beautiful, intense gaze that never takes his eyes off you? Are you dancing? Are you singing? What are you doing? And in that moment, often the physical pain will just go away. And that tells me, if you can do that for a moment, what if you can get to a point where your spirit is so in control under the power and authority of the Holy Spirit that this manifests in your body more and more until you just naturally move to a place of living from heaven to earth. Jesus teaches us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, as it is in heaven. So you are already healed in the heavenly places. You lack nothing. And Jesus's cross and his resurrection provided for everything you need for healing. So when Jesus says to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, you're only, you're just agreeing with what Jesus already asked us to pray. Is anyone sick in heaven? No. Is anyone in pain in heaven? Does anyone have chronic disease in heaven? No. So we're, we're you don't have to be worried about if, if, if this is God's will or, or, or you know, if he's going to be displeased with you. Um, he said to pray on earth as it is in heaven. So you're just coming into alignment with that. So a huge part is just agreeing with him, 
surrendering to him and receiving. And it's so much easier, especially if we've grown up in a religious culture, to run around trying to make things happen in our own strength. And we can wear ourselves out doing that. So here's the thing. She hears about Jesus's healing power. And rather than trying to, here's the thing. Her next step wasn't, well, that's probably not for me. She could have made all these different excuses why that healing power wasn't for her. But instead, when she heard about Jesus's healing power, she pushed through the crowd. Okay, if this was a huge act of faith for this woman to push through the crowd because she was unclean, according to that culture. And here she is coming into contact with all these people. She's risking them maybe being disgusted with her, ridiculing her, being angry at her, mocking her. Who knows what she was risking to push her way through that crowd if they knew what she was dealing with. And if she'd been dealing with it for 12 years... Maybe, maybe a few people in that crowd knew what she was dealing with. And yet she pushed through them, came up from behind, and touched his prayer shawl. Now, I want to clarify. So most um, versions will say, you know, touch the hem of his garment. I love the, the clarity that the Passion Translation gives because it says, As a Jewish man, Jesus would have had over his shoulders a prayer shawl or talit. The blue tassel on the corner of the prayer shawl was said to symbolize all the commandments and promises of God. And I think this is really cool because, um, you know, I have a prayer shawl and, and under it, I, I just, I have so many encounters with God. Um, he, you know, so this is what it looks like. And this is a messianic prayer shawl. So it's got the, um, the tassels. But um, on the tassels, there's all these promises, like, for example, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him, 2 Corinthians 5.21. So all these verses that um, point to Christ's completion, um, Christ's fulfillment of the law in the new covenant. This one, this is huge for our topic today. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. Isaiah 53, 5. And this is a messianic prophecy. So he was wounded so we can walk in healing and he suffered so we can walk in peace. These things already belong to us. If we're not walking in them, it's not because they don't belong to us. We, we just need to come into agreement with what Jesus says. And I want to, I want to note here that the prayer shawl in itself is not um, magic, but there is something for me really powerful about feeling like I am under the tangible presence and healing power of God. It's like a big hug. So all it is, is for me, it, it's just a, a powerful physical manifestation of what is true in the spirit, namely that I am under the healing power of the most high God, that he is sheltering me. He is covering me. He's protecting me. And so I often will have prayer times under that prayer shawl. And maybe during this season of you know, believing for your healing, there might be some objects that you can use to just remind you of, of God's promises. But when I've struggled with depression in the past, my, my grandmother bought me this bluebird of happiness and she is just a joyful person, walks in the joy of the Lord. And so sometimes when I'm praying, I'll hold this bluebird of happiness as just a reminder that um, depression is not my portion in Christ, that joy is my portion in Christ. And that's what he died for so that I could walk in joy. Also, I have this wooden cross from my grandma, um, who is with Jesus now. And up until the very end, um, she, uh, she walked closely and faithfully with the Lord. She told me, she was just like, well, I'm ready whenever he wants me, but I guess he knows why he still has me here. And she just trusted his timing. And so, um, yeah, so maybe you have some precious objects like this and they might be good to put in your prayer closet, in your prayer corner, maybe ask the Lord, what are some objects that can remind me of your healing power in my life? And there can just be something really nice about 
having those, especially if you are um, a sensate or experientialist spiritual type, that can, can really be powerful for building up your faith. She touched his prayer shawl for she kept saying to herself, if I could touch even his clothes, I know I will be healed. It's not like if, if I know enough of the Bible, then I will be healed. It's not if I get close to him, I might be healed. She doesn't feel like she has to do anything except touch him. Just touch him. He's the one with all the power. All she has to do is get near him. Beloved, that's what you need to do. So when we touch him, when we're near him, like one of my favorite quotes, I quote it in quite a few of my videos, but Zach Neese in How to Worship a King, he writes, we are healed in the presence of a healer. We are delivered in the presence of a deliverer. We are saved in the presence of a savior. Get in his presence. So that's what that throne room visualization is about. Ask God to see things in the spirit. Ask God, maybe you've been cursing your body. You know, just little word curses that you throw out without thinking of them. I, people do this all the time, like, oh, these old bones, oh, this back of mine, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, the la, la. you know, we, we do it without thinking. But guys, our words are so powerful. So bless your body, bless your body, thank God for your body. And if you're having trouble blessing your body, thanking him for your body, seeing your body as he sees it, then ask to see what you look like in the spirit. I guarantee you, you look awesome in the spirit. The Lord will show you what your spirit man looks like and then just claim that in the physical to manifest and just bless that very part of your body that is bothering you so much. Bless it. Thank God for whatever it does. Thank God for its function. Thank God that it's fearfully and wonderfully made. Bless all, the, maybe think all the things in the past that you've done with it, you know, and and thank God for all those things and, and you'll be amazed uh, what a difference that will make if you make that a habit. As soon as her hand touched him, verse 29, her bleeding immediately stopped. She knew it for she could feel her body instantly being healed of her disease. I feel like it's really easy for us to read a story like this. It was for me for so many years. I, I wasn't really in context where I saw, saw a whole bunch of immediate healing. And it was really easy to be like, well, that's just a special ministry that Jesus did while he was here. And then they did, they did an Acts to prove the gospel. But we don't really see that now. Unless we live in a really poor country, we don't have hospitals. Jesus only does that for people that don't have hospitals. No, he does that because that's his character. Because he's kind and good and that's what he does because we are healed in the presence of a healer and he is still a healer today just like he was a healer back then and he isn't a sometimes healer he is an always healer okay so I my faith was so stirred up this morning because in church we had people stood up there was actually um, a woman who'd been prayed over who had been in the hospital and they went ahead and just thanked God, like, again, thanking God in advance for the miracle. They thanked God for her healing. And they went ahead and were just like, she's healed. She's going to walk out. She's fine. And then literally this morning in church and the husband said, I just, she's all clear. And then she walked into the service right after that. We had another person who uh, Monday night, they had walked in with a cast and the pastor had said, you're going to walk out healed tonight. And sure enough, they walked out with, or not a cast, they, they had their arm in a sling. And then sure enough, that arm was out of that sling. And when you see things like this over and over, and I, I've gotten to the point where like, I've, I've seen this more and more and more and more, uh, your faith is really stirred up. And it's just amazing what the Holy Spirit's doing in our day. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. So just like her, she said she could feel her body instantly being healed of her disease. This can happen right now. And if you're not in a context where you're around people who believe for that, um, I'm not saying, you know, we're, gosh, we're all, uh, we're all in process. Nobody gets it right 100% of the time. Even a lot of the, you know, the TV preachers who they make like a platform on healing, they don't see it 100% of the time and they'll be honest, but get yourself around some people who believe 
for God's healing power today. Maybe who have seen a, a miracle. Like I know I have so much faith to pray for others because I've seen the miracle in my own life. So ask the Lord for friends, for people who can encourage you, who not only believe for instant healing and, and, and miraculous healing, but maybe who have experienced it themselves. So that some of that faith and some of that impartation can just get on you. Um, you know, ask the Lord for, uh, for this, for those people to bring those people into your life so that you can feel your body being instantly healed of your disease. Now, verse 30, Jesus knew at once that someone had touched him for he felt the power that always surged around him had passed through him for someone to be healed. He turned around and spoke to the crowd saying, who touched my clothes? I want to pause again. So again, listening to The Veil by Blake Healy, he, one of the things he says is that um, the angels are always, they're, they're like ready, you know, they're often in church services and often we're bored and we're yawning, but if we would just tune in, there are angels often waiting to like pour out amazing things on us, amazing spiritual gifts, experiences with the Lord. Um, they're just waiting to be claimed. There's all this goodness waiting to be claimed. And so what I love about this translation is that it brings out the fact that power is always swirling around Jesus. Power is always surging around Jesus. It's like a, you know, people have compared it before. It's like an electrical outlet. That electrical outlet always has power available. You just got to plug into it. That's all this lady did. I mean, she didn't do anything else. That plug doesn't do anything but receive. And so she just plugged in and that electricity that was already around him surged into her. Uh, I think it's, I think I was listening to a, po a podcast that um, Paul Young was on and he said, uh, he said, we want to heal. We just don't want anyone else to know about it. It's like, God heal me, but just keep it between you and me. Okay. Well, in my church and I'm, we have so many bold, courageous disciples of the Lord, they will get up and say, the Lord healed me of pornography addiction. He healed me of alcoholism. He healed me of hatred and bitterness. And they will just say these things. There's no shame. And here's the thing. There's no fear either because we know second you get up and especially if like you've just been healed of your porn addiction like maybe you know you've had that for years and years maybe you were exposed to it too early as a child but you um you just believe by faith in your church in the church service i've been healed of my porn addiction well a lot of people are afraid to say that because they're afraid that well the enemy is going to come back tonight and he's going to tempt me and then i'm going to stumble and then uh you know what that's exactly what the enemy wants you to do he wants you to be afraid of making that declaration because you're afraid of what he's going to do to come back to try to steal what what the lord gave you what the lord freely gave you don't let him do that you know if you if you stumble or if you're like i'm healed in the name of the lord and then your symptoms come back you know what you do just continue to say i'm healed in the name of the lord thank you lord that there are no symptoms and if it's something like an addiction i have a friend who did this uh, it has this exact testimony. And then I think um, Joseph Prince also talks about this in his book, Destined to Reign. Okay, so these people literally, you're healing of a smoking addiction, right? Well, m my friend, and this is what Joseph Prince recommends too, just she she kept smoking and she would be like, I'm not a smoker. Thank you, Lord, that I don't need cigarettes. I'm not a smoker. Thank you, Lord, that I'm not a smoker. Thank you that I'm not addicted to nicotine. And you, you know, for a few months, just every time she popped a cigarette in her mouth, she would just be like, thank you, Lord, that I'm not a smoker. Thank you that I don't need this. And you know what? It took a few months for it to fully take root. But as she just continued to make those declarations, every time she reached for a cigarette, you know what? The desire went down. It went down. And today she has been walking free of cigarettes for years. And so you know what that does? That just flies in the face of the shame and condemnation that the enemy wants to bring to you. Look at you. You lied. The God didn't really heal you. Maybe he doesn't really want to heal you. And look, like, look at you. You told everyone you're free of porn. And look at you. You're such a hypocrite. No. No. In the spirit, you just say, Thank you, Lord, that I'm free of this. You know what? You 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 declared your, your freedom from porn that morning, and then you stumble that night right in the middle of watching that. 
show. Maybe you don't feel able to turn it off at that moment, but you know what you do? You say, Lord, thank you that I'm healed of my porn addiction. And thank you that I don't need to be watching this. Thank you that you satisfy me and you are enough. And you just keep declaring that. You stand on your healing. And don't give in to shame or doubt or fear or any of the schemes of the enemy. Because your holiness is not even dependent on what you do. Your holiness and your righteousness are dependent on the holiness and righteousness of Christ. And he never gets any less holy or righteous. And he never stops living in you once you've received him. It doesn't matter what you do. He loves you and he won't stop loving you. So returning to physical healing, Jesus um, asks who touched my clothes because he's trying to get her to come out and publicly confess. Your public confession is so important. Just like when you're saved, it's so important to not just be saved in your heart, but to go forward and get water baptized. So in the same way, this woman was being challenged, come forward and own your healing. Come forward and declare the miracle. Thank God for the miracle. This seals it. And there's also, there's accountability and other people's faith is stirred up. They then have the faith to believe it and they can support you in your faith. Like when you get up and you say like, thank you, Lord, that I'm healed from depression. Well, you've got a whole body of Christ to rally around you. And the next time you feel yourself sinking into a depression, they'd be like, no, you're healed and whole in the name of Jesus. We saw what he did for you. We believe that for you. And again, this is hard. We don't want relationship. We want to heal without relationship because relationship is hard and people let us down and they can be there for us one minute and not there for us one minute. I'm not saying it's easy. It's a very courageous thing to do to come forward and acknowledge your healing. But that's exactly what Jesus was asking this woman to do. He knew who had gotten healed. I mean, he knew where the power had gone out, but he was saying, come forward and acknowledge it in front of these people. Here she is, verse 33. She's trembling with fear. She throws herself down at his feet saying, I was the one who touched you. And how often does this happen? Like we receive healing from Jesus and we're thinking, oh my gosh, I don't deserve this. This must've been a mistake. I'm so sorry. I didn't earn this. And, and, I'm going to let you down and we try to make it like a workspace thing. We try to make it like, well, I don't deserve. And Jesus is like, no, it, I freely give it. This power is always swirling around me and all anyone has to do is plug into it. And I want people to plug into it. I don't, I don't want people to strive in their own strength to go to doctors for 12 years and spend all they have and have nothing to show for it. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are thirsty and all you who are hungry, come and, and buy bread without cost. Buy the water that satisfies eternally, that's, that swells up to a stream of living water. Jesus freely gives because that's who he is. And Jesus says in verse 34, Daughter, because you dared to believe, your faith has healed you. Go with peace in your heart and be free from your suffering. So this is the will of Jesus. Dare to believe. Dare to believe he is good. Though you've spent 12 years running around, though you've spent all your money, Stir up your faith and believe. I'm not saying you'll receive an immediate full manifestation. I mean, we, we see in scripture, you know, Jesus, sometimes the whole miracle happened right away. Other times he had to pray for people a few times. And what may happen is because you're stirring up your faith, you're building up your faith. You may have to do what I did and uh, declare the healing, believe God for it, thank him for it. But then to walk it out, carry scriptures around with you. And then the symptoms might try to come back because the enemy is trying to convince you that God's not good, that it didn't work, all these things. You, you take out your healing scriptures and you say, no, I bless my body. I declare this. I declare that. 
go into the throne room. See yourself healed and whole. See your spirit submitted under the Holy Spirit, your soul under your spirit, and your body under your soul. And command everything to come into alignment with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Jesus' heart is for you to go in peace and be free from your suffering. 